Hey guys, so today is part 3 for a series that I made a few months ago called Mopar Rare One-Off Builds. In those videos I showed you guys one of the only manual Dodge Charger SRT8s out there, a manual supercharged Chrysler 300, as well as some amazing convertible builds of some various challengers and chargers, including a Hellcat and a Demon. Today I want to look at more one-off and unique builds from the world of Mopar. I have 3-5 to five vehicles on tap, haven't decided yet how many I will include. These are all pretty much one-off creations, but it would be very cool if these were offered as a production car. So let's get into looking at these very rare and unique builds. We start today with another incredible build from Cleveland Power & Performance, who also had some cars featured in the first two episodes. So that's a shop in Ohio that specializes in restorations and custom cars. For this episode I want to look at their 2006 Dodge Magnum SRT8 that has been swapped with a 6.4 liter 392 Hemi V8 engine, a 6 speed Tremec TR6060 manual transmission, and they even went further by adding a Pro Charger Supercharger. The Magnum SRT8s were hard enough to find to begin with, with just 2,970 made in total for 2006 globally, and just 1,628 of those made in brilliant black like this one. So with the swaps, this is a real rare limited one-off edition. So to begin the build, the shop purchased a 2006 Magnum and a 2012 Dodge Challenger manual SRT8 to use as the donor. They also bought a 2008 Magnum SRT8 to use for the front end parts, as the Magnum got a facelift for its final year in 2008 before Dodge cancelled it. So the 06 looked a bit different than the 08, so they updated the whole front end to have that newer look, including the hood, bumper and headlights. The wagon also retains its factory option roof rack, while the rear wiper arm has been deleted. The stance is menacing, with OEM 20x9.5 inch Hellcat Brass Monkey wheels, and it was dropped on a BC Racing coilover suspension. Beneath the wheels are factory Hellcat Brembo brakes, 6 pistons up front and 4 pistons in the rear, with the calipers painted in header orange. The combination looks fantastic on this Magnum. The tires are Nitto NT555s, 275-4020 in the front, and 305-3520 in the rear. The inside is pretty well stock apart from the Barton shifter. It's got the touchscreen navigation, kicker sound system with rear-mounted subwoofer, and center console DVD system. So as for the power on this beast, the shop installed a P1 SC1 Pro Charger Supercharger that runs 7 PSI of boost. Other mods here include Kook's long tube headers, high flow cats, a billy boat cap back exhaust, 3.92 get rag limited slip differential, and matching axle shafts. On the dyno it put down 529 horsepower and 528 pound feet of torque, I believe that was to the wheels. This one of a kind Magnum was put up for sale and sold shortly after it was built, but it was fully insurable with a clean title, so the owner is probably having a lot of fun with it. I've always had a soft spot for the Magnums and the SRT8 already turns heads as it is, so it's hard to imagine how awesome it would be to own and drive this incredible beast of a machine. Next up we have one of the rarest Vipers ever, the 2006 ASC Dodge Viper Diamondback McLaren. This was a one-off, a one-of-one, one, where Dodge joined forces with McLaren and American Specialty Cars, or ASC for short. This was a company that developed specialty body parts and a ton of concept cars for many car manufacturers around the world, including Chrysler and McLaren. And if you're wondering where McLaren came from in all this, Chrysler was merged with Daimler at the time, who owned Mercedes-Benz, which was tied to McLaren. So the Diamondback was first unveiled at the 2006 Detroit Auto Show based on the 06 Viper SRT10 Coupe. The stock SRT10 had the 8.3 liter V10 with 510 horsepower, but McLaren Performance Technology specially tuned the engine, adding a ton of horsepower up to 615. That V10 was paired with a 6-speed manual. Along with that engine, ASC had a patented omni-carbon process where they used compression mold and carbon fiber. So that resulted in a custom carbon fiber roof, deck lid, front splitter, rear fascia, side rockers, side venting gills, and many interior pieces. The hood was also carbon with a trumpeted air intake system with 10 individual port throttles that are coming right through the hood, so that's a very unique part of this car. All this carbon fiber was for a purpose, to save weight, and by doing so, the weight was reduced by 85 pounds from a regular Viper. You'll notice a racing stripe that runs along the hood, roof, and trunk that has two thin pinstripes along the outline, one of them is painted in McLaren red, and the other in Viper blue, and the body color was Arctic Ice Pearl. This Viper had a suspension lowered by 1.25 inches, a custom stainless steel quad outlet exhaust, 
four point racing harness, custom three piece forged and painted 19 inch aluminum wheels, and the tires were huge 275s up front and massive 345s in the rear, and of course, the Diamondback also got Brembo brakes. They also added a racing kill switch because why not? All of these efforts would get the Diamond back from 0 to 60 miles per hour in only 3.5 seconds, 0.5 seconds faster than the Viper SRT10 at the time. How much does this one of a kind car cost? Well, it was put up for sale in 2009 and 2018, I believe, with a price tag of $295,000 US. And just a few days ago, someone by the name of David Kazoo commented on my video showing me a link that has it up for sale for $249,500 on Auto Trader. So it actually cost ASC $750,000 to build, so if you look at it that way, you're getting a bargain. There were also once rumors to produce more of the Diamondback, or even have it replace certain Viper models in the Dodge lineup, but by the end of this, it was the only Diamondback that was ever made, and ASC went out of business just one year after its release. In 2014, Dodge shocked the automotive world with the 2015 Dodge Challenger SRT Hellcat, the most powerful and quickest factory built muscle car, with tons of power and a sinister looking design. We all know about the regular Hellcats, but there is one model you might not have known about, the Hellcat X. Quick history lesson on the Hellcat, the name and what it represents, got its inspiration from the F6F fighter planes from World War II, used from 1942 to 1945 by the US Navy and Marine Corps. There was also an upgraded XF6F which had a supercharger and turbocharger added to the 14 and later 18 cylinder engine on those planes, with over 2000 horsepower, a top speed of 380 miles per hour, and a cost of $35,000, a lot of money back then. The X was the improvement on the standard Hellcat back then, and the same holds true with this model in 2015. So first of all, where did this car go and why was it produced? Well, this was a one-off made by Walsh Motorsports for an organization that was called Dream Giveaway. The Dream Giveaway program had been running since 2008, raising hundreds of thousands of dollars for all different types of charities, from veterans to children. The goal here was to give it away, raffled off for an organization called New Beginning Children's Homes, which provides 24-hour residential care to children that have been victims of family violence, neglect, and physical abuse. So not only did this Hellcat X get raffled off, but it was also paired with a custom 1970 Dodge Challenger RT. So the winner would receive both vehicles and $40,000 to cover the taxes they would have to pay on their winnings, as the total prize had an estimated value of $175,000. To enter the raffle, all you needed to do was have an address in the United States and buy a $3 raffle ticket, and that's it. If you wanted to increase your chances of winning, you could buy different packages, including the most expensive version, which was $5,000 for 6,000 tickets. So the more tickets you bought, the less they would cost individually. As for the Hellcat X, it got a bunch of different features over the regular production version. The outside had raw aluminum hood extractors, instead of black, chrome accents on the grill, an adjustable chin splitter with rods, deck lid spoiler, a handmade diffuser, and Hellcat X fender badging. It's nothing crazy, just a few modest additions. The inside is almost the same as a regular version, but adds Hellcat X logos embroidered on the front seats and floor mats, but unfortunately there are no pictures of that interior. What really draws everyone to the Hellcat and the Hellcat X is the insane power. The regular Hellcat of course has the 6.2 liter supercharged Hemi V8 with 707 horsepower and 650 pound-feet of torque. The people at Walsh Motorsports added a Hellion or Helion, not really sure, Power Systems twin turbo setup with 62mm turbos that were under the car just behind the engine. That added 98 horsepower and 150 pound feet of torque, up to a staggering 805 horsepower and 800 pound feet of torque. The one thing that we do not know is whether the 6 speed manual or 8 speed automatic transmission was used here. The X was never formally tested, it was taken to the drag strip a couple times, but they have the times off for some reason. But the estimated times were a few tenths of a second faster than the standard Hellcat. 0 to 60 in 3.5 seconds, and the quarter mile in 11.8 seconds on street tires. I won't forget to mention that 1970 Challenger RT, which comes with a 7.2 liter V8 with 375 horsepower, and it was fully restored in 2012 and featured in a few commercials. So that's the end of today's episode guys, hopefully you enjoyed taking a look at some of the more one-off Mopars out there. What do you guys think of these builds, and which one was your favorite? 
let me know down in the comment section below. Anyways, thanks for watching, subscribe for more Mopar content, and I'll see you guys in the next video.